Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and what I want to show you is a event request application that we have built that you can download and install inside of your own environment, and you can start to tweak it and make it do what you want to do. So before we go through the installation process, and if you look in the comments underneath below, it'll give you all the links of where to go to download the solutions and how to import those solutions on our GitHub, I want to show you what this application can do and some of the cool features inside of it. So let's go over and take a look. Alright, so this is my event request solution. This is one of three solutions that you will have to download and install inside of your environment. And we have some flows in here, some tables that are collecting the data inside of Dataverse, and then we have the applications themselves. So the first thing is I want to showcase off the model-driven application part here. And in the model-driven application, we are using students and employees to log for event requests. But this could be modified for things outside of students and schools as well. And let me do a little bit of a zoom in here. And what you can see is that each of my contacts, we've made a separate column on the contact table called contact type. So before you play your Canvas application, you're going to want to open up your model-driven application, go find some sample contacts or create some new ones, and you're going to want to assign them a contact type. So that's easily done by simply clicking on an old contact, coming down here, and then choosing the contact type. And you can see that we have a few different options, student, parent, alumni, staff, etc. So I'd make a few of the different ones just to see how they look inside of your app. As well as you could make your own uh, contacts as well by just clicking the new button and then filling in some information here as well. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do before we go into the Canvas app so you can have some play data to work with uh, as well as this is schools which is really our accounts table. So these are just sample accounts that I have in my Dataverse instance. So if you already have some sample accounts that's great or you can create some new ones here as well. So you're going to want to have a few students and employees make a few different schools and then we can move into the Canvas application. All right, so let's head on over into the application. So I'm gonna hit play here. So what you're seeing at the top, these are components that we have put inside of this application, which is why that's one of your other solutions that you'll be adding in, which is our component library. But from here, we have three buttons to get us to our home screen. Do we wanna make a new request or go look at our old requested events? And we can get to these same places by using our side menu over here as well. So if I wanna make a new request, so from here, I can make a new event. Uh, and so we're just going to put in some dummy data here. So field trip to aquarium. Is this an all day event? No, it's not. It's not a recurring event. I have event types, which these can be modified in the solution as well. But these are just some sample ones we started with. So a day field trip, uh, learning about marine animals, the event location, 321 aquarium road. We put in more information there for the location. I'll choose that the start time is just, it's defaulting to today's date and time, but you can easily change these. And I'm gonna say that we're gonna return in the afternoon. The requester defaults to myself because I am the user. So there's code in here to automatically default it to the user, as well as the school that this user is associated with. So this is just the event info. Now from here, we don't click on save because we're gonna to continue to move throughout this form and add in extra information. So are there any expenses located for this account, for this field trip here? So I'm gonna say, yeah, we're gonna be taking a bus. So I'm gonna call this bus transport. Uh, the cost of the school is gonna be $200. We're gonna get a $50 donation from a sponsor. In the end per student, each student's got to pay $3 to, to get on the bus. And for our chaperones, they're gonna to have to pay $2. So from here, I'm now going to move over to my event requirements. Are students attending? Yes, they are. Do we need a permission slip? Yes, we do. Non-students, do they need a release required? In this case, I'm going to say no. Were there costs associated? Yes, there were. Is regional approval required? Because what you're going to see is inside of the solution, we have an approval flow that after the record is created, a notification is going to be sent to the contacts manager, and the manager is then going to approve it. Now, if we put that a regional approval is required as well, it's going to be a two-stage flow. So the manager will have to approve, which would be like the principal, and then if they approve it, it's going to go to the manager, uh, the supervisor regional approver's email, and they will have to approve. 
So if both people click approve, the record will be updated to an approved event. If one of those people hit no, it's not going to be approved, it will be rejected. And if I choose that regional approval is not required, then it's only a one stage flow. And all that logic is built inside of the flow that comes with your solution. So from here, I'm gonna go over to students and what students are going on the event. So this only shows me contacts that have a contact type of student here. So I'm gonna say Robert's gonna go and Jim is gonna go. Now let's go on over to the teachers. From here, these are all people that have a certain contact type. So if I close out of my preview real quick and I click on this, what you can see is we're allowing our users to choose any contacts that are a contact type of teacher, administrator, or staff. But you can easily modify your contact types to make this fit your solution. But this is just the default solution that we have here for us. So I'm going to go back to my play button here and I'm going to say these are the people going on the trip. Then for my other participants, these are also have a certain filter put on the options we can select. And these are ones that are parents or that are alumni. So that's why these are showing up here the way they are. And so I'm going to say these two parents are now going on the trip. Now that I've given the information, I don't do anything with approval info because we don't have an approval that has been set yet at this point. So I'm going to click on save here. After I click on save, what we'll notice is it's going to create a record inside of our Dataverse tables. Now on the Canvas app, this says here's our field trip to the aquarium. We see all of our event details. And if I realize, hey, I misspelled learning here, well, I can click on edit request and come on up and correct my spelling. So I'm going to say learning and then I'll save it. And it's going to now change that record on the model driven app. Now, is it on the model driven app? It definitely is. So if I go to the model driven application and I come on over here to my event request, we can now see the field trip to the aquarium here. And this is a view that we created, but again, can be modified. We see that the event status has been defaulted to submitted and it has not been approved yet because the email for the approval has not been acted upon. But what we also see in this application is if I click on my field trip to the aquarium, we have all of the details inside of here. So another place to come on in, this is where the approver can do the approval information here. We don't want to use a power automate flow. But what's great about model driven apps is if we come to this related section, I can find any of my other tables that have a relationship to this event and see those related records because we have quite a few tables inside of this solution. Student participants, here are the different student participants that we have. If I want to come over and see my staff participants, here are the staff participants. And if I come back on over to those students where I said a student permission slip is required, if I click on the student, I can come on over and say whether or not we have required their forms, have they currently been collected? And I can get to all of these records as well just by going to the different sections, but these are all participants for all of my different event requests. So it's nice that you have this related capability inside of the model-driven application. So now that I have a request made, if I come back to my Canvas application, we can see here if I needed to modify like, hey, you know what? There are some students that are coming on this event. I only put in two. There's actually more. I can click edit attendees. I can say Yvonne is going, but you know what? Jim is going to be sick now. He's going out of the country or whatever it is. I can remove Jim. And then from here, it's now updating that record for me on the Dataverse tables. And now I can close out of here. Over here, what you're going to see is going to let us know the status of the trip. So this is green, which means I have approved this trip here. So this is how your Canvas application is going to work. There are all sorts of things that you can modify in here, but this is a great starting point if you're wanting to do any type of event request. And again, I showcase one for a field trip, but there's lots of other options for professional development, uh, the booking of a room, but hopefully this is a great starting point for you to start to put this in your environment, tweak it the way that you want it to go, and hopefully this helps you somewhere down the road. So if you would like this solution, what I'm gonna show you now is how you import this inside of your environment. So let's take a look at how that's done. So to install the solution, there are three solutions that we're going to have to install. And in the comments beneath this video, you can see the link to get those downloads from our GitHub repository. But once you have them downloaded, you're going to come on over to solutions and we're going to click up here at the top to import a solution. So then I'm going to click on browse to find that solution file. 
So the first solution that you have to install, these have to be done in a very specific order. The first one you want to install is this Pragmatic Works UI Components. Now don't be alarmed if it has maybe a different name because sometimes we'll update the file. So if it doesn't have this exact name, you're going to be okay. So I'm going to click on open here and then I'm going to click on next to import the solution. And with the magic of editing, we'll see it done very quickly. And then I'll hit import. Now that that solution has been imported successfully, we're now ready to move into our next solution. So I'm going to come back up here, click on import solution and browse to the next solution file that we need. And the next one that we need is this core tables modification. This is the one that has that extra contact type for the columns for our contacts table that we need for this solution to do its job. So we're going to pick our core tables solution. We're going to open, we're going to hit next, and then we're going to hit import. Now that the core table mod solution has been installed, here's what you do not want to forget to do in order to get full functionality. You're going to want to go in and click on your core table mod solution. After clicking on that solution, up at the top, you want to choose to publish all of the customizations that have come with it. So I'm going to choose Publish All Customizations. And then after all of these customizations have been published, we have one more solution file that we're going to put in, which is the Event Request Solution. Now that all of our publication customizations have succeeded, our last part is to get the final solution in. So we're going to come back to Import Solution. We're going to point to our event request solution and then we're going to open and we'll hit next. So again, we installed first the component solution, then the core table mods, then the event request. Now for the event request, we have connections that we have to use and you might already have your connections set up in your environment. This is a brand new environment that I provisioned for this demonstration just to make sure you know how to make connections if you've never done it. So we're using Office 365 Outlook as part of our Power Automate flow to send out emails. So I'm going to have to make a new connection here. So I click on New Connection. I go to Outlook. I hit Create. I'm then going to choose my email address, which is going to make the connection here for me. And after that connection is made, when I come back to Solutions and hit Refresh, we can now see it's done. Another connector we use is the Office 365 Users Connector to bring back information about our users. So again, I'm going to have to make that Office 365 Users Connection. I'm going to hit Create, choose my account. That's then going to create the user connection. I will head back to Solutions, refresh again. Then we have to connect into the Dataverse instance. So we're going to make our Dataverse connection here. We're going to hit Create, going to choose our account. And then finally, our last one here is going to be the approvals, which is in the Power Automate flow. So I'm going to hit New Connection. We're then going to hit Create. We're going to go back to Solutions. Now all of our connections have now been made, and then we are going to choose to import the solution. Now that our solution has now been imported, just like we did for our core table mods, we need to go into that Event Request Solution and then choose to publish all customizations. Now that all customizations are succeeded, what we can now do is we can go into our applications and start to play them. But again, in order to see actual contact student teacher information, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your model driven application. You're going to want to play the application. And you'll, if you have your sample contacts in here or any contacts in your contacts table, you will see them when clicking on your students and employees and changing this to seeing all of the active contacts, which you see here. Oh, you have to sign in again. And then from here, you can just click on each of your contacts and then change the contact type. So you can make a few students, parents, alumni, etc. And then at that point, make sure you have a few schools in here as well, which is simply just your accounts table. So these are just sample accounts that I have in here. And now you can play the Canvas application and see how it works. And, and hopefully you got a, a great solution to get you started with. You can start to make your own modifications, choose to use the flow, not use the flow. Um, but hopefully this is a great learning experience for you. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hey, if you haven't liked or, or subscribed to our channel before, great time to do a subscription now so you can stay up to date on all the videos we have. And if there's anything we can help you out with to partner with you, we would love to train you or your company to get you to that next level. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.